Hi everyone, our last lab is molecular models. Now, <clears throat> give you the usual checklist, right? So one, download the lab from Canvas, okay? And <laughs> that's what you get, right? So the first page, introduction, then there's the kind of the body of it, okay? So <clears throat> what you're gonna do of course, is um, oh, so I get on the page here. I kind of slide it around. Okay, so you're given certain compounds. You do the Lewis, and then you know, based on oh, I'll go back to my checklist in a second. Based on the last couple of packets, you can figure out the electron shape and the true atomic or molecular shape. Okay, <coughs> and you can say if it's polar or not, and look at its hybridization. And because you know the hybridization, you can get the bond angles. Okay, so I guess checklist number two is. <laughs> complete through more chemical bonding. Okay, so download the packet, print it out if you can. I'm not sure if it's editable or not, might be, right? If it is, that's handy. But to be honest, you should probably print it if you can, because you've got to be able to draw structures, right? Okay, complete through more chemical bonding. Okay, and then you're good to go, right? So what I intend to do, <clears throat> I'll give you some hints and tips, right? So before we even start looking at this, the best thing to do is one, get your more chemical bonding packet first sheet. And when we've completed this sheet, this first page literally is all you need to complete half the packet, right? So when it comes to hybridization and bond types, bond angles, it's all on that first page, right? So if you, you know, picked up what we were putting down for uh, the material for more chemical bonding, you are in excellent shape. Okay, now what I intend to do is, generally speaking, just go through a few examples. Yeah, just go through a few, through a few examples. I'll do water, SF6, and others, okay? But here's the big trick, right? The big trick is, unless it's a molecular ion, right you can probably ease it right meaning that you can just use a simple lego right so hydrogen just has the one stick right so row one two electrons in that outer layer just has the one stick right row two eight electrons on the outside so we have carbon nitrogen oxygen and fluorine Okay, don't know why I'm squeezing them over there. <laughs> so yeah, row one, row two. Now row three, of course, if it's in column five, it's five on the outside, right? If it's column four, it's four on the outside, but it can undergo expansion, right? So we saw that, didn't we, right? So when we have row three, we have that kind of magic area of the periodic table. So phosphorus can be like that, or phosphorus, if I promote that one electron, can be that. Right. Similarly, sulfur, if you remember sulfur, it can be it's regular like oxygen, or it can expand once, and we saw sulfur dioxide, or it can expand twice. Okay. And then chlorine, xenon, I, I'd advise you to check the packet for those, okay? But remember, row one, row two, row three, if the center atom is in row three, it can undergo expansion into those Ds, right? If it's a row two, it's a MacGyver for sure, unless it's a molecular ion, okay? So let's look at a few. Now you can do this, and this is kind of the, <laughs> the concept, right? You can do this without, without a molecular modeling kit. I'll just kind of do them in the modeling kit so you can see the shapes a little easier, right? But you can kind of look at the model on the page and determine its shape, right? Just based on center atom, all right? So let's look at water. Okay, so water, H2O, I shouldn't have to kind of uh, talk you through this one too much. It's a give me, right? <laughs> so there's water, right? Electron geometry, one, two, three, four clumps, right? Okay, four clumps, as you know, it's a classic example. Tetrahedron, 109 bond angle sp3, all right? So electron geometry, Tetrahedral, TD stands for tetrahedral, right? Now be careful, molecular, we can only see atoms with molecular shape, right? So that's non-linear. If you're not picking that up, go look at the packet, right? 
Okay. Polar or non-polar? Well, water is the tractor. Remember tractors and trailers, right? So if I go back over here real quick, okay, water definitely has a minus end and a plus end, okay, because of those kind of polar covalent bonds. So polar covalent bonds not cancelling in kind of vectors. Look at the H2O example in the second packet. Look at the CO2 example. You'll see cancelling and not cancelling, okay. Polar. I'll just put P for polar. Ah, oh, that's right, the word. Polar. Hybridization, well, four clumps, sp3, four clumps, sp3, bond angles, tetrahedral bond angle, 109.5 degrees, oh, <laughs> degrees, <laughs> degrees, angle, not degree C, okay, so there it is, okay, so that's your first one, hopefully water is a nice entry level one, all right, now, Here's the thing, when we look at our next example, my next example is going to be SF6, right? Now, because fluorine is row two, it can only make one bond, right? It can't expand its octet, so therefore the six fluorine, so that sulfur must have six bonds to it, because it's SF6, right? Okay, so that means, and this is an example in the book, we're going to be looking at a fully expanded sulfur, right? Okay, so, the Lewis, and you can play with it on the side. I recommend, you know, if you have a piece of paper on the side, just play with it. Center atom is sulfur. It's got the highest valence C. So that gets plopped down, and it's six bonds. There's a fluorine on the end of each one, right? And don't forget the outside layers. Oh, that should be there. Yeah. Okay. Geometry, electron geometry, one, two, and it's always looking at the center atom, right? Center atom has six clumps around it. Remember the packet, that's octahedral, right? So six clumps is octahedral. Molecular geometry, well, there's an atom on the end of each clump, also octahedral, okay? Polar or non-polar, this is an interesting one because if you think about it, every fluorine is across from every other fluorine. So even though those bonds are super polar, right? they're always cancelling, so it's like a really kind of three times over CO2, right? So that's actually non-polar. If I was able to sub in a chlorine here, right, it would be polar because it would be kind of not as symmetric, yeah, but that's as written, non-polar. Hybridization, well, <clears throat> we go back to our reference sheet, right? So six clumps sp3d2. Bond angles, well, they're all right angles, aren't they? So that's 90 degrees. If you go north and south, it's 180, but that's two 90s. Okay, so I'll kind of scan it across so you can see. All right, so <clears throat> that's the first couple, right? Okay, I've got a couple more. And um, so <clears throat> when we look at this one, NH2OH, I want to do this one because it's an example of a molecule that's kind of a bit longer, if that makes sense. So it's not just center atom. So when we look at it, N needs three, oxygen needs two, and the hydrogens are just one, right? So it makes sense. And when you play with it, there's only one combination that works where all the bonds go somewhere, right? So it makes sense to put the oxygen there. All right, put a hydrogen there, hydrogen there, hydrogen there. So it's kind of written in a pseudo molecular formula, and that's the only combination that works that obeys the rules of valency, right? So it's like a Lego problem, right? So you just twist, turn them in space, stick them together, make sure each atom has the correct valency. It's just like we did with the, the packet, right? And that's good, okay? So, and O, H, oh, lone pair. Now, when you're not sure which atom to think about, right, I put a little asterisk next to it. That's not a bond, that's an asterisk, right? So that means I'm going to kind of concentrate on that, that center atom, so what's around it, right? So, <clears throat> if I like my picture here better, it's got <clears throat> three bonds and a lone pair, so it's four clumps, right? So electron geometry is tetrahedral, four clumps, right? Molecular geometry, careful, can't see that clump. Remember we did ammonia in the packet, right? So it's trigonal pyramid. 
Polar or non-polar? Well, <laughs> it's not symmetric, right? So the bottom line is this is not a symmetric arrangement around nitrogen. This one's pulling and this one's a pulling in, right? So this is a little bit minus, that's a little bit plus. So that is a polar covalent bond, right? And they're not cancelling, there's not another one on the other side, so it's polar. It's non-cancelling dipoles, right? Okay, hybridization, four clumps. SP3, we saw that before. Bond angles, tetrahedral, 109 and a half. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. There it is. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. There it is. So, <clears throat> do I have any more? Yeah, I have one more. <laughs> okay, there is one kind of um, super weird example, which I will show you because it's going to save you a lot of heartache, right? Okay, uh, this one, C... HCOOH is formic acid, and when you play with that, yeah, the rules of valency are obeyed for second layer, right? Okay, and first layer for hydrogen, but carbon has to go on the center. Then the only way you can stick two oxygens around it, around it is to do that, right? And then that leaves that there, okay? So I'll give you the C double bond OOH. H. We're called center carbon. Center carbon is the one we're looking at in terms of geometry, right? So if you've got a couple of atoms in the center, maybe they're, you know, similar, like in maybe this example, right? Okay, just pick one, okay, and then just explain various things for that, right? So their electron geometry, well, it's got three clumps, right? Three clumps is trigonal planar. Three clumps is trigonal planar, right? 120 bond angle. Maybe I can jump over there real quick because I know it's trigonal planar, 120 bond angle. Molecular geometry, well, there's an atom on the end of each clump. Good to go. Trigonal planar. Polar or nonpolar? Well, these are three different bonds, right? So they're going to each have some degree of polarity because they're all hetero atoms are all bonded to different atoms, right? Carbon to oxygen, single double bond, and then hydrogen. So these will not cancel, right? So these aren't going to cancel. They're not like perfectly symmetric, so that's polar. Hybridization, well, three clumps, sp2. Okay, so <clears throat> you have a bunch of... Uh, Examples, right? A bunch of examples. So let's just recap. So <clears throat> print them, okay? Try and print them because it, you know, it's hard to kind of draw it, right? Okay, you've got to draw a reasonable structure over here, right? Okay, it's probably better to draw that rather than try and type it, okay? <clears throat> so it might be kind of creative PDF scanning, right? Okay, so print it if you can. Might involve a trip to Kinko's, right? Okay. Complete every row. Name. Partner's name, obviously not a thing. Okay. Have this to me by Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. All right. Usual thing. Email to my JJC address. Don't use the Canvas email. Attachment PDF probably is the one. Okay. If you can get it into Word somehow, fantastic, but probably, you know, I mean, if you try and think about that, if you want to do it in Word, you could have a, a side sheet, right? And maybe you have this on the side sheet and then maybe you take a picture and cut and paste it into a Word document. So I'm okay with that. It's a little bit more work, right? Because you'll be cutting and pasting in here, right? That's fine, right? As long as there's a picture in there, but you can't draw with a typewriter. That's what I'm saying, right? Or keyboard, all right? So if it's Word, more work, take a picture, cut and paste. If it's PDF, just print the sheet, fill it in by hand, scan it, send it. Okay, so it's kind of uh, up to you how you do it, but I do need drawings here, okay? All right, so stop there. Hope that makes sense. And uh, that is our last lab, fantastic. So as soon as I get all these in, so on Wednesday night, I'll get them all in by then, and I'll have your uh, lab grade up by Thursday morning, right? So check Thursday morning for your lab grades. On the whole, people are doing really well. If you remember how I grade labs, uh, the, the person who gets the best score for the whole semester gets the whole 150, and then everybody's graded against that, right? So generally, people go between 120 and 150, so labs generally help. So if you're a bit worried about your lab, don't be. If as long as you hand them in, you're doing fine, okay? So 
Look for lab grades on Thursday, and as I speak, it's actually Saturday, right? So I'm trying to get this stuff out to you as early as possible this week so you have time to review for that last uh, midterm exam, which will be on Thursday. So the usual thing, Thursday, I'll have the office hour. As soon as office hour is over, I get down to my computer and email you your, uh, your second midterm. So you have Thursday and Friday to do that. I get it back on Friday, and the grades will be up sometime during the weekend. Okay, final grades for the course. Okay. Any questions? Now, I advise you to kind of like invest a little bit of time in this and kind of go through the stuff we've done in the past and come to that office hour on Thursday because that's the last chance to ask me questions before you take that second midterm. Okay. Second midterm is usually a little harder because it's got all the math in it, right? All the slides and ladders, and limiting reagents. And students, for some reason, often have a problem with um, the stuff we're doing right now molecular shape. I think that's traditionally because it comes towards the end of the course and people are running out of steam a little bit and occasionally some instructors get a little bit behind in the syllabus so they kind of rush it, okay? But uh, hey, <laughs> you've got a video, right? So you can rewatch it, rewatch it, rewatch it and hopefully that makes sense, okay? And don't forget online on my website there are old practice exams so feel free to take a look at those and it's the same questions we've done at the back of the packets, all right? <laughs> so you've got time to practice, and uh, then comes an officer if you've got questions. All right, so we'll stop there. I'll uh, see you guys in the last packet. The last packet I'll have up pretty soon, right? So it's Saturday. I'll probably work on it maybe tomorrow <laughs> by the latest Monday. So you will have your last uh, lecture packet up on Monday, and I'll allow you to finish out the course. All right, so good stuff. All right, see you guys next time.